Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2016 Advanced. In this section we're going to continue looking at functions in general and I want to look first at tools to help you find the functional functions that you need. Now let's take a particular example. Let's suppose that I'm working on this new worksheet here and I know that I need a standard deviation function. That's a statistical function. Well, if you look at the Formulas tab, you'll see the Function Library group there and some of the most commonly used categories of function. So you have Financial, Logical, Text, etc. Note also a category there of Recently Used. And if you do tend to use a fairly restricted set of functions, that's a really good feature because it makes it more likely that the function you want you've used recently and you can merely locate it here. If you look at the other end of the group there is a more functions button and this gives you access to the other categories one of which is statistical and the flyout list there lists all of the available statistical functions. Now note that with each one if I just hover over it I'll get a screen tip with a description for that function and underneath the screen tip there is a link to help now unfortunately this link to help is not quite as good as it used to be because it basically only takes you to a general Excel functions help area and what you would need to do for the particular function that you were looking at just now is to type in the name of the function and then you would indeed get the help on that function but it isn't contextual as I believe it used to be. So what you might do knowing that you need a statistical function is to scroll down there and try and find the standard deviation function that you need. But if you didn't find it, and that will often be because you don't know its name, and you don't particularly want to look at the screen tip for every one of those functions, there is another option, and that is to click on Insert Function. And that brings up the Insert Function dialog. Now, note that the Insert Function dialog here has this particular field which is the category field pre-selected at statistical because I was looking at the statistical functions when I invoked this. Let me just cancel it again. There are a couple of other ways of invoking this dialog. One of them is that it's the leftmost command on the formulas tab. And another way you can invoke it is with this little FX button here on the formula bar. So once I've invoked the insert function dialog I have access to the same list of functions the statistical functions that we were looking at just now but there are a couple of important differences with using this dialog. Note that as I click on each of these functions I will see the equivalent of the screen tip information there. If I click on help on this function It does, however, take me to the actual help on that specific function, which I think is a big advantage of using that dialog. And the other big advantage is that if you don't know the name of the function that you want, you can use the search facility. So I click in that first field. I know I need standard deviation. Let's just try typing in standard deviation. In fact, standard will probably do it, but let's try standard deviation click on go and here we have a list of functions that in some way involve standard deviation. Now the very first one is stdev that's the old standard deviation function and as you can see there from the text underneath the list this function is available for compatibility with Excel 2007 and earlier. And then we have the current standard deviation functions this is one for calculating the standard deviation of a sample. This is one for calculating the standard deviation of a population. And then we have various other functions related to standard deviation, some of which are compatibility functions and some of which are not. But as you can see, the big advantage here is that search facility. So what I'm going to do here is to calculate the standard deviation of the numbers in cells A1 to A7. And I'm going to put the answer there. So I'm going to use the insert function dialog. And I do know the function that I want to use on this occasion. 
Now note that when I click on OK, what I see is this function arguments dialog. And this is a particularly useful dialog, not only because it will remind you about the arguments that you need for a particular function and give you more information about what the function does, but it can also help you to enter the arguments for the function. It's a non-modal dialog and therefore you can not only type arguments in or type in cell references, but you can actually make selections on a worksheet to form the arguments for the function. Now in this case the cursor is flashing within the function arguments dialog in the number one field and I could type in there the first number that is part of the sample that I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of. I could put the next number in number two and so on. Now in fact I can also put things like lists of numbers, ranges and so on into those arguments Note the little prompt on the right there that tells me that it's a number that's expected. But if, as in this case, the numbers that I want the standard deviation of are adjacent, quite conveniently, then I can also select the range of numbers just by clicking from A1, dragging down to A7. And you can see that my first argument is A1 colon A7. It's a range. If I wanted to add a second range, I could either put that in as number 2, or I could just put a comma after A1 colon A7 in number 1, and put an, an additional range in there as well. So it's very flexible and very helpful in terms of quickly populating the arguments for the function. Now the function arguments dialog gives me a preview of the formula result, and I just click on OK and there is my standard deviation. And there's one other feature that can be very useful and that's a feature called Formula Autocomplete. Now in order for this to work you need to make sure that one of your options is set correctly. The option you need is on the Formulas page. It's in the Working with Formulas section, second option down, Formula Autocomplete. And as the little information panel there says, show a list of relevant functions and defined names when building cell formulas. This functionality can be enabled or disabled by using the keyboard shortcut Alt plus down arrow when in formula editing mode. Now the reason for giving you that straightforward shortcut is that this function can be both helpful and a little bit annoying as well. So let's suppose that I'm going to put a formula into D4 that involves one of the amortization functions and I know that it's AM something then I can type equals to start the formula and then as soon as I type A I get a list of the functions that begin with an A. By the way where you get these little screen tips for this one you can actually move these little screen tips out of the way if they're obscuring part of what you need to see on the worksheet and in fact it's the drop down for example and the screen tip etc that some people find rather annoying with the formula autocomplete function but let's say I know it's a m oh yes it's one of those two and let's suppose I decide it's probably the first one so I'm going to double click on that and when I've done that not only do I get a list of the arguments for that function but the function name itself here has a link to the help on that function. So I can not only check that it is the one that I want, but there will normally be a full explanation of the arguments and often an example. I could actually copy and paste some data here and actually try this out. So it's a very useful way there of confirming that you've got the right function. And then depending on the arguments, as you start to type in the values or select the values, so say there the first value I want is cost, let's assume it was $2,500, comma, not only does the next argument in the list get highlighted, but if it's possible, what the formula autocomplete will do will offer me options or recognize what I'm typing in that particular argument. Now in the case of date it won't be able to guess what date I meant but if I was say going to put a name in here it will be able to react to what I was typing to help me to identify the name that I wanted to include. 
But other than that, I carry on entering my arguments. Note, as usual, that optional arguments are in square brackets, so the last argument there is optional. And that's it. That's formula autocomplete. Now, in this couple of sections, I've either introduced you to or recapped for you some of the key general features for using functions in Excel 2016. In the next section, I'm going to look at the auto sum functions because they also have some important and rather unusual features as well that it's well worth knowing about. And then in subsequent sections of the course, as we use some of these functions, you'll see some of the features I've been talking about in action. But that's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hi, I'm Nigel from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching. Do you need additional Microsoft Excel 2016 training? Get over 20 hours of Excel 2016 training by clicking the Learn More button on the right. I'll see you next week with additional videos.